think it's a thing that it's too good. Um, I think it's been a little bit surprising the um, sustained momentum in the labor market. Uh, we're looking for 220,000 for jobs. So we are a little bit above really? the consensus. Um, but I feel comfortable with that. We had very strong signal from the ISM surveys. The ADP numbers were strong. Um, and in general, the momentum in the economy has looked good. So I think we should see that reflected in the labor market. Um, but as, as Mona said, a key factor is wages. Um, because that's really where the question is, whether or not we're going to see an inflationary push in the market, that's what really can start to move things even more than we've seen thus far. Um, and I think the wage numbers are going to look strong. We're looking for a 0.4% month over month increase. That's higher than the average too. I yeah. think the average estimate is 0.3%. That's right. So we think stronger growth, higher inflation. Part of the wage data is uh, potentially distortion from the hurricane. So the hurricane led to a decline in the work week when we tend to see, we think it will lead to a decline in the work week. And when we see a decline in the work week, you tend to have an upward bias to wages. Because if you're working on a salary basis and you're still getting paid the same for less hours worked, it looks like there's inflation. Precisely. Bingo. But the market is not going to be very forgiving of that potential asterisk exactly. if we actually see a 0.4%. Exactly. I think if you see the 0.4, it followed last month's 0.4. With strong headline job growth, I think you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna get a, a reaction. So what 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 does the Fed do if we actually see that? Are two data points in a row enough to say, okay, we see the whites of their eyes in terms of inflation? I think Powell's been um, pretty uh, pretty clear in terms of how he's communicating the recent view, which is that. The near-term data is it's robust. We think we have a green light to continue to hike. Um, they're moving a little bit away from the R-star framework and this idea of normalizing to equilibrium rates and the view that we don't know what equilibrium is. So let's not focus so much on that. Let's instead focus on the momentum in the economy, financial conditions, and all of that is saying to the Fed, you can continue to go until something tells you to stop. And so far, they don't have that something. And if the data comes in this today, as we expect, strong job growth, decent wage growth, or strong wage growth, that's going to tell the Powell Fed, yeah, let's keep going. Hmm. Do you, you don't have a number for today, do you? Uh, you know what? What we're looking at is if we get 2.8, 2.9%, I think the market will be a little bit relieved. You're talking in year-over-year year, average year hourly earnings. Average earnings. Yeah. yeah. But I think if we hit that 3% threshold, I think the, the worry level goes up. But even at 2.9%, highest level post-crisis. So we're, we're inching upwards here. A 3% plus number to Michelle's point, people start maybe getting a little bit more worried. And we watch that 10 years still. So the stock market wants some perfect number again? Yeah. Right. Not too hot, not too cold. Oh, wait. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think we're even at 2.93%, it's pretty much a Goldilocks scenario. You're getting strong growth, you're getting still in line. Pre crisis, average hourly earnings were about 3, 3.5%. So we're still not too hot.